Hello and welcome back. In this short video, I want to just take a moment to introduce you to our course website. And I'm not going to spend too much time, or I don't want to spend too much time on this because I think it's pretty self explanatory and you'll get more familiar with it the further we get into uh, the course. So here, here's an example of the course website behind me here. Now, bear in mind that if you're watching this uh, sometime in the distant future and you're in a different quarter, the, the actual quarter uh, details will change, but the layout will be pretty much the same. Now, the first question here is, you know, why am we not using uh, Canvas or Triton or our, our uh, traditional learning management system that we'd use for other courses? And the reason is actually multifold, and it, it all stems back to student feedback from past generations of students who went through this course, who have now actually graduated and gone on to bigger and better things, and they want to use these methods and tools and, and analysis uh, routines that we've learned together in this class in their new uh, employment, right, in their new labs or in their new company settings. And they come back to try and access the course material and it's locked behind a UCSD email and account that they no longer have access to in that learning management system in Canvas, for example. And that's a sin, right? You know, they, they don't have access to that uh, material any longer. So with that in mind, and the fact that we can organize things in a much clearer way and have this as a central hub for all our material rather than jumping off to lots of individual websites and separate documents that you have to download and keep track of in weird ways, that we're going to have everything organized here in this self-contained website. So let's just spend a minute uh, to walk through some of the sections that you'll spend most of your time in. And we'll get to learn more as we go through the, the course as well. Okay. So let's uh, focus here behind me and we'll zoom in and uh, take a look at some of these. So first up here we have on our landing page, you'll notice that uh, as I record this video, we're in our remote uh, forced uh, distance learning environment of fall 2020. You'll see that I am the, the course director here. This will link to my additional uh, lab website where you can find out more about my research and and background and, and things like that. You'll also find my my email address here. And w as we have mentioned in some of the previous videos, we have a, a discussion forum called Piazza. You'll see that link to down here in the sidebar here with, uh, if you can see where my mouse is here, this is uh, will link you to uh, our Piazza website, which will, uh, the first time you do it, will require you to log in uh, on, on register which we'll, we'll do in a moment. Um, but if you know if you can't get an answer that's satisfactory to you or it's some topic that you don't feel comfortable posting either in the anonymous or the public uh, version of that form, just reach out by email. You'll see our email contact for both myself and our instructional assistants for each quarter all listed here. Now you'll also see here on the homepage our uh, traditional kind of syllabus and this is in PDF format here. So this will take you to uh, uh, you know the the syllabus that you'll be used to seeing in other classes and it has all the gory details here about our schedule and the types of topics that we're going to talk about our uh, specific learning goals for each of those course segments our homework our grading details about accommodations diversity and inclusion and of course the ethics code that um, you know can be summarized as you know being awesome to each other and you'll you'll not go too far wrong but if there are any issues with this particularly these last two points here in the ethics and diversity and inclusion if, if it's uh, pl please bring it to our attention as soon as possible these things will not be tolerated in any uh, shape or form okay so back to uh, the course website you'll find much of the same uh, details in that syllabus kind of summarized here you'll also find a link to our piazza forum right here as well and then our Zoom based office hours, this will link to uh, that particular meeting on a weekly basis that we'll participate in. You'll notice that there's no textbook for any of these courses. That's that's a good thing, right? You, you know, it means you don't have to spend extra money on this. All the material you need is here on this website. All the notes, all the hands out that you uh, could ever need or want are going to be posted here on this uh, website. And of course, there are no textbooks because this material hasn't made it into textbooks yet. It's, uh, 
it's a bit too new for that. And then the other thing I want you to note here is these surveys. Now there's a pre-course survey and a post-course survey. The post-course one won't be uh, available until uh, later in the quarter, but the pre-course one is available for you right now. And I really do encourage you to take 10 minutes and fill that out. So here I'm asking for your UCSD email address, please. And if you're auditing or you're officially registered for the course, that's good to know. If you're auditing from another department, it's also good for me to keep uh, track of that, please. But the, uh, and then, you know, answer these, uh, these questions about your background and some of your motivation for taking the course. But really what I'm going to spend most of my time initially paying attention to is what you answer for this last question. You know, what do you actually want to learn about in a course like this? You know, what are the key things that you're struggling with in the lab or that you would like to become uh, better with in the computational analysis of your data or in your bioinformatics workflows or on these sorts of things? You know, what topics do you want to learn about? And then we can include them in, in these courses. Just let us know here, please. If it's more than one, put them in. Uh, this is really, really helpful for me to make this course most relevant for you. Okay, so that's our pre-course survey, so please do spend some time with that. We'll be using, uh, later in the course, we'll be using some supercomputing resources that are provided by Exceed. This is an NSF fund, uh, funded uh, or supported environment for uh, data access to, to extreme computing, mostly used in engineering and the physical sciences, but also for biology, of course. And then we'll also be using Data Campus online learning environment that I'll introduce you to in, in a later uh, video. Now, where you're going to spend most of your time on this uh, on this website is on the schedule page. So you see down here is our main uh, navigation or nav bar. So the schedule is really where you'll see all our content posted. You'll have an overview. Uh, and again, we're in looking here currently at the fall 2020 quarter, but it'll be similar for, for future quarters that are uh, forced remote like this. If it's a traditional face-to-face uh, -face class, we'll be structured lecture by lecture in, in, the, in the normal way. But for remote uh, courses such as this one in fall 2020, we're organizing on a weekly schedule. So new content will be posted on a weekly basis. And you'll see all of those listed here from week zero, one, right the way through to week 10 to the end of the quarter. And you can click on any of these uh, topics here and it'll take you further down the page where you'll get a list of the topics. Let's let's maybe pick a, a later one here. The topics that we're going to cover for a particular uh, section are uh, specific learning goals for this section. Then these uh, lecture substitute videos that, that we're recording uh, like, th like this one that'll be short, you know, 10 to certainly no more than 15 minute videos. There'll be three to four of these per week that uh, will introduce you to the necessary f uh, fundamentals and important points and motivation for why I want to teach you this stuff at this particular time. You'll find also for your record, the lecture slides that we uh, would uh, use in those videos or traditional face-to-face um, -face class. And then any other supporting information like handouts, but there'll be a, a lab section. This is the main uh, thing that you're actually going to do for, for a given week beyond just watching uh, those videos is working through this hands-on content in this problem-focused uh, mode, this hands-on mode. And then there'll be later in the week on either Thursday or Friday. Uh, we'll decide on the particular time when we poll you for, for what works best. We'll have an actual video walkthrough of that hands-on session. So I want you to attempt these hands-on worksheets before that and then come and join me in this case you know on Thursday or Friday at 10 a.m. San Diego time and I'll actually walk through it with you and we'll answer any specific questions you have and make sure that we're all on the same page and we know how to use these particular tools and methods or coding as you'll, as you'll see a little bit later on uh, and we're all working on this together. There'll also be a link to our office hours which will either be on Thursday or Friday. We'll, we'll finalize this. The next thing I want to point you to, of course, is the homework. This will link to uh, um, uh, uh, questions like this. It's not open yet, but there'll be a, a, a quiz questions here for you to answer that'll review the main uh, kind of goals that we've had for this particular section. And then there'll be supplementary reading here in PDF format, such as this one. That is not a requirement. I'm not going to uh, 
uh, check that you do this or anything, but it's there for your benefit and it'll help you actually answer some of the homework questions and it'll dig deeper than what I do in those uh, lecture videos, for example, if you're so motivated to go deeper, if this is something that uh, is of interest to you for your research at a particular time. These will be, of course, uh, more relevant when you actually have to do this for real, you know, in the lab and you have to do single cell RNA-seq, you know, those references that I put there on that kind of method, you'll probably want to come back to as they're a great starting point for digging deeper into these topics. Now, the other thing I want to uh, point you to is the computer setup link here. So this is over here in the sidebar again. Um, there's a few things you'll need to install on your computer from the start, from the get-go, if you will. Now, you will need to have administrator privileges on your uh, machines, right? So this means um, that you'll be able to install software. It's not some uh, laptop that you took from uh, your company or your previous job or something and you can't install software on. You need to be able to actually be able to administer these, these machines. You'll uh, want to have an up-to-date web browser and I recommend having uh, at least two of these web browsers. I like Chrome and Safari and Firefox, so pick two of those and, and install them. The reason we want multiple is some web resources work better in one browser and others work better in another browser and I'll sometimes flick between them uh, to to uh, show you that, to show you that sometimes these uh, bioinformatics resources online that we use sometimes are a little bit funky with particular uh, uh, browsers, even in this day and age. Now, more critically, we're going to need uh, two things to do with this data analysis environment called R. You're going to need R itself, so that's the, the R brain, that's the thing that will allow us to do our data analysis and it'll do all the work for us. And then once you've installed that, there's a separate install called RStudio. And this is an interface to R itself. It's what's called a, an IDE or an interactive development environment. And this is a package that will allow us to learn R in a more friendly way and keep us organized as we go through. And I'm going to introduce you to RStudio desktop itself as we get into the course. So it will, we can click on these things here. So R it, it will be installed from this site called CRAN, C-R-A-N, which stands for the Comprehensive R Archive Network. Let me uh, open that here for a second so you can see what it looks like because it's not always uh, clear which one you would want to click on. So it loads this old school looking web page here and uh, it's most likely that you're on uh, a Mac or a Windows machine. We'll deal with these individually. If you're on a Linux machine, I run Linux here. I can talk you through that separately, but you probably uh, you know, know uh, what you're doing on, on that side if you're running that Linux machine. If you're on a Mac, as as in my laptop that I'm recording here at the moment, you would click on R for Mac OS X. And then that'll load up. And again, here there's lots of text. It's a text heavy page. But what we're after is this thing, the latest stable release. And at the time of recording, this is R 4.02. That's the version number. So as long as you've got something uh, that's a higher number than that or that number itself, we're good to go. You'll also want to install this thing called XQuartz that's shown here. This is a an old school windowing environment that a lot of, uh, particularly bioinformatics software that does interactive graphics and whatnot will use. It used to come shipped with the previous versions of the uh, Mac OS, but now it doesn't, so you have to install that separately. So those are the two things you need as a Mac user from this page, the R uh, package, and that'll be click it and go through the steps, same as you would with any software. And then this X Quartz tool as well. So if we go back for a moment for those Windows users, here we would click on R for Windows. And again, what we want here, you'll notice that it says here, this is what you want to install if you're installing R for the first time. So just go for it. This is the base. Uh, package that you want to install. And then the second thing that I want you to uh, get from this web page is this thing called R Tools here, right at the bottom. What this will do is it'll provide you uh, the necessary infrastructure to install um, bioconductor packages and other packages that we'll use in this course that actually need you to compile uh, code. Which, and these tools don't often come with, actually they don't come with Windows out of the box, but this R Tools package will allow you to do that. So you'll need that as well as the R base. So those two things, please. Now, I also mentioned 
Once you've got that, you're gonna go and install RStudio Desktop. That's linked to here. And we'll uh, open this here in this tab. And what we're gonna look for here is, you know, it's recognized that I'm on a Mac and it tells you to install R first. That's what we've just uh, been talking about previously. And then, and then, and only then install the RStudio Desktop because it actually just interfaces R itself. That's what does all the heavy lifting. So it's, it's uh, realized that I'm, uh, visiting from a Mac computer, so it's telling me to download this one. If you're on a PC, it'll be highlighted for PC. If it's not for some reason, you can always go down here and click either the Windows version here, and this will just be a regular software install, like any Windows software, you know, click through the, the different windows. And the same thing here for Mac. This is the this is the disk image for, uh, for OS X or Mac in this case. So that's R dealt with, and then for Windows and for Windows only, we're going to need a separate um, Unix-like environment called um, Git for Windows or Git Bash, some people call it here, uh, and it's linked to from here, and this full setup instructions here. What this will give you here is a version control system called Git. We'll talk all about version control later in the course. It's a best practice recommendation that will emerge from this course with. It's a way to keep track of work that you do and to collaborate with others and keep a record of it. It'll also give you a lot of the Unix tools that are missing from a standard Windows install. And we use Unix a hell of a lot in bioinformatics. It'll seem old school because you type at a terminal initially, but we need to do this if we're gonna access um, those supercomputer and cluster resources that we'll need whenever we analyze really large data sets as we'll do later in this course. We're actually gonna log into those machines and we'll do that in a Unix like environment and drive things from the command line. And we're gonna uh, cover all of that in this course and get up to speed with it. So you're comfortable uh, and familiar doing with that. So with that, there'll be some other software that we might install later in the course, but we can really uh, leave this until those course segments and we'll talk a little bit more about them at that point. For now, I really want you to focus on R, R Studio, and if for Windows only, the Git bash here or, or uh, git for windows so that's it for the software setup you'll see our learning goals that are spelled out here and we'll we'll talk uh, a little bit more about them in each course segment of what i actually want you to learn in these courses and then finally for um uh, for this video i want to point you to our assignments and grading so for this particular um quarter this fall 20 20 quarter where we're working remotely we're doing a lot more smaller assignments smaller homeworks that are uh, a way for me to assess how well you're learning this content so we're not actually going to have a final exam for this quarter that we normally would have in our face-to-face -face, uh, instruction in a, in a regular quarter so that's some good news for you i guess uh, we will have a, a large project as well as some mini projects that that uh, are used to uh, assign points and percentages for your grade. So it's all documented here. We'll talk about these in great detail as we get into those segments of the course. But the idea here with these mini projects and this longer, uh, what we call find a gene project here, is that you get to practice and put together a lot of the different tools and techniques that we learn from different weeks all in one place so you can see how they fit together of course but you get to practice them and apply them in a less guided fashion it's not like our hands-on session for each week where i'm essentially guiding you through your first use of these tools but in these projects you're going to be more on your own and applying these on your own with support of course right you can always ask us if you're stuck but the idea is it's more like a real research project that you're going to ask and answer your own questions that you're interested in about these things Okay, with that, I think we'll finish there with the ethics code. You know, failure to pay attention to this is not an excuse, so please do read this. It is important, particularly in you know light of everything that's going on in the world at the minute. And you know, violations of this code will not be tolerated. And if you do notice anything, please speak up, let us know, and we'll deal with it. Okay, so welcome to uh, welcome to the course. Thanks.